strength was all gone when my heart had no song even then he proved faithful to me every word he's promised is true what I thought was impossible I see my God do His love and mercy I see Though in my heart Yes, I have questioned Even failed to believe But God's been faithful times I could not pray even then God was faithful to me the days I spent so selfishly reaching out for what pleased me even then was faithful to me every time I come back to him he is waiting with open arms and I see Can I hear the church say amen?
Can I hear the church say praise the Lord? Can I hear the church say thank you, Jesus? Can I hear the church say glory, hallelujah? Amen. We are here today to lift up the name of Jesus, what do you say? We have come to magnify and bless that high and holy name. For the name of Jesus is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, his name deserves to be praised. I want to thank Sister Young for that beautiful song. He's been faithful, hasn't he? He has been faithful. I'd like to also thank our children's choir for having sung so beautifully for us earlier on. This church is a very talented church. Thank you very much, Elder Sharp, for your kind words of introduction. And one of the reasons I say that your church is talented, I recognize that you have two very outstanding musicians, Ashley and Abigail. Amen, friends? Uh, that's a good sign. There are some churches that are struggling to find one musician. And you are so blessed to have so many. You have Brother Brown, an outstanding musician. And you also have Elder Reed. These persons do very well for Jesus. Today, my brothers and sisters, we're here because we need a word from God. You did not come to listen to this frail lump of clay. You came to listen to Jesus. The subject is entitled, But God. But God. Just before we go into the word, we're going to sing a prayer chorus. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. The members of the praise team are coming as we are going to sing this prayer chorus very meaningfully. Our hearts are tuned heavenward. All the things of this world are being blotted out right now. Our focus is on God. One more time, very softly. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. are bowed, our eyes are closed. Our great loving and compassionate Father who art in heaven, this frail lump of clay stands before your people one more time. I am nothing, O oh God, but I pray that your divinity will take control of my frail humanity. Speak through me today. Let the name of Jesus be lifted up. And should there be any praise, O oh Lord, please, we, are, we beg you, allow it to flow to Calvary. Grant us your blessings, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. But God. The word but is one of the most frequently used words in the English language. 
In Greek, it is the word Allah. Quite notably, this three-letter word carries great weight. It is a conjunction that can join together in one sentence opposing thoughts and views. It is used to introduce a phrase or a clause contrasting with what has already been mentioned. It can be used as a preposition, an adverb, or a noun. There are many instances in the Bible where the word but is used in a positive manner. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to those who believe on his name. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God raised him up from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, we are told, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Uh, there are many powerful phrases in the Bible. Phrases like pulled out, plucked up, reached out but one of the most outstanding phrases is the phrase but God this phrase has been used 43 times in the Bible it's a powerful phrase which suggests the power and authority of God I could have been dead but God I could have been sick but God, we could have been destroyed by the power of the devil, but God, but God says to us that there is power in Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that as God's people, difficult times are going to come, rough times are going to come, but we have an anchor that keeps us whole, steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. God never said that you would always have sunshine. He never said that there wouldn't be any rain. But he simply said, I will be with you as children of God. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, remember, but God, remember when your enemies come upon you to eat up your flesh. Remember, but God. The world says defeat. Elder Simpson. But God says victory. Sister Williamson, your enemies say they're ready to destroy you. But God says, I'm not yet ready. Evil people conspire to destroy you. But God says, listen, I'm just putting you through the fire. But God recognizes that when tribulations come, Jesus will bring you through. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Genesis. Genesis chapter 39. Genesis 39. One of my favorite Bible stories. Genesis 39. I want us to read alternately 1 through 10. 
Genesis 39, 1 through 10. When you have found it, let me hear you say amen. It reads thus, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and in the field. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Amen. The Bible tells us that Joseph Brother Brown was an outstanding young man. He was the favorite son of his father, Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. And Joseph was his favorite. And my Bible tells me that Joseph had many dreams. And his brothers were envious of him because of the dreams he had. I need you to understand, my brothers and sisters, that when you have dreams... There are persons who will be jealous of you. There are individuals who will be dream stealers. They will want to steal your dream. There are others who will be dream killers. They will try to kill your dreams. But by the grace of God this afternoon, dream big dreams for Jesus. By God's grace today, let no one steal your dreams. Sad to say that even in God's church, there are persons who like to shoot your dreams down. But bless my heart, my brothers and sisters, once your ways please God, once you are walking according to the principles and precepts of God, your dreams will become realities by the grace of God. For it's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of almighty God. I say to you in Mandeville today, dream big dreams for Jesus. Dream and hold on to your dreams because with Christ in the vessel, you will smile at the storm. The story is told of a teacher who gave his class an assignment. Each person, Sister Williams, was told to paint a picture as to what his or her dream was all about. A particular young man sat down and he painted a beautiful picture. In this picture, he had a beautiful ranch. There was a nice car. There were many oxen. There were many cows. It was a beautiful, beautiful picture. When his teacher saw the picture, he told him that he was too ambitious. He told him to change it or he would have gotten an F. The little boy, Sister Judine, was confused. So he went home and he told his father. The father said, son, if this is your dream, let no one steal it. Hold on to your dream. 
He kept his dream and he went back to school the next day. And he told his teacher that he was not willing to change that dream. The teacher gave him, Sister Gray, a big fat F. He cried, but he accepted it. Ten years later, the teacher was still teaching. He took a group of students to a beautiful ranch. They began to admire that ranch. There were many oxen and cows. There were many fine vehicles on that property. They looked and they admired. Out of nowhere, a young man came and stood before this teacher. The teacher said, your features are very familiar. I have seen you somewhere before. Where have I seen you before? He said, when I was in school, you gave me an assignment. When I told you what it was all about, I gave it to you. You told me to change it. I did not change it. I kept my dream and here I am today. The teacher looked at the students and told them, let no one steal your dreams. Hold on to your dreams by the grace of God. Today, I want to let you know in Mandeville there are some people who are telling you you can't make it they will discourage you they will tell you you can't make it but listen to me my brothers and sisters when you have Jesus you will ride on the high places of the earth when you have Jesus your enemies will become your footstool there are some persons who are making life miserable for you but in the name of Jesus you gotta have a Holy Ghost attitude you gotta look them in their faces and say to them God is not finished with us yet for we are blessed and highly favored when somebody asks you how are you doing you must not be like a barking dog rough 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 you must say I am blessed for I'm a child of God let no one steal your dream let no one tell you that you can't make it for with God, all things are possible. So Joseph had many dreams. His brothers were bowing down before him. But they were envious. They wanted to kill him. But praise God, God had a plan for Joseph. I want to let you know today, God has a plan for every one of us. You may not recognize his plans in your lives today, but God knows the beginning from the end. God knows why you're going through the things that you're going through. So I say to you, the hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory. I have come to encourage somebody here today in Mandeville. Somebody who's on the verge of giving up. Somebody who's saying, I can't take life anymore. Somebody who's listening to me via the internet. You have a knife in your hand. You're about to cut your wrist. You have a gun in your hand. You're about to play Place it at your head in the name of Jesus. Put down that gun, put down that knife, for there is hope in Jesus. Just get on your knees and talk to God, for God still hears and answers prayer. There is hope in Jesus. So they hated Joseph. But one of the things that Jacob did not do right. He petted little Joseph. There are some parents who have favorites. And I want to tell you, it is wrong. Every child must receive equal love. Every child must be loved accordingly. Some mothers look at their sons and tell them that they're worthless and they're ugly like their fathers. They tell them, some mothers, as they look at their sons, they are reminded of their husbands or their exes. I want to tell your mothers, don't treat your sons badly because of your husbands. Love your children. Look at all that we have done. We have disgraced God. We have brought disrepute to his name. But God still loves us. If God were to deal with all of us as how we truly deserved, not one of us would be here today. But the grace of God 
keeps us today had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary this preacher would not be standing before you had it not been for the grace of Jesus none of us would be here for Isaiah says all our righteousness are like filthy garments we might look holy we might talk holy we might act holy but had it not been for Jesus we would not be here today thank God for grace the Bible says that Jacob gave Joseph a coat of many colors this made them even more upset they made a plot to destroy him but one of the brothers said listen let's not kill him but let's put him in a pit they took they took the robe killed an animal elder simpson jr dipped it in the blood of the animal went back home and said father your favorite son has been killed lesson number one be careful what you do in this life what goes around comes back around. When Jacob, Mr. Anne Marie was a young man, he tricked his daddy. Brother Tubal, he tricked his father. He robbed his brother Esau of his blessing. No, he was an old man. His sons tricked him, Elder Sharp. Be careful what you do in this life, be careful how you treat people. I am happy that in Mandeville Church, Sister White, we treat each other with love and respect. But I have pastored some churches where some persons were treated based on their social standings, based on where they lived. But bless my heart, I want to let us understand that at the foot of the cross, we are all equal. For in Jesus, there is no east or west, north or south. A pastor is not more important than a member. We're all equal in the sight of God. Sad to say, we treat some people based on their qualifications, based on where they live, based on their accomplishments. But listen to me today. We must treat people because we're all equal in the sight of God. God. I have buried a number of persons. I am coming from Maypen Clarendon. I just left them last month. And in one year and three months, I did over 70 funeral services. And I've never buried a rich man in his car. I've never buried him in his house. I've never buried him with his bank account. We came into this world with nothing. And we shall leave with nothing. Humble yourselves in the sight of God. Remember that we are dust. And unto dust shall we return. Our pretty looks. Our money. Our social standings. Can't save us. Praise God. The only thing that can save us. Is our relationship with Jesus humble yourselves before you die seek the lord reach out and touch him believe his word confess your sins to him eternity is nigh before you die before you die seek the lord keep your eyes on jesus so in god's church we must love one another we must treat each other with respect. Do good to people while they can see it. The song says, don't scatter roses after I'm gone. So they trick their daddy. He was 17 years old, Joseph was. The Bible says he was sold as a slave to some merchants of Egypt known as Ishmaelites. But what men meant for evil, but God 
meant it for good. Romans 8.28 declares, All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Sometimes people meant evil for you. Sometimes people set traps to destroy you. But God, when you're a child of God, your enemies will become your footstool. When you're a child of God, you are blessed and highly favored. Three times Balaam tried to curse Israel. But instead of cursing them, he ended up blessing them. When you are blessed by God, your enemies will turn around blessing you. So when he got to Egypt, Pharaoh bought him. He entered the palace of Pharaoh. A young man, 17 years old. But what his brothers meant for evil, God blessed him. You can't keep a good man, a good woman, a good boy or a good girl down. When you're wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus, you're going to reach places. And so the Bible tells us that everything that Joseph did prospered. Every move he made, God was with him. For his steps were ordered by the way of Almighty God. So much so that Potiphar promoted him in his household. Lord have mercy, but the devil was there. For the Bible says that Potiphar's wife began to admire him. For in verse 10, well not verse 10, the Bible tells us that Joseph had two qualities that not all men have today come here elder brown come here quickly elder brown quickly the bible says that joseph was handsome and well built look at elder brown he's handsome and well built some men are handsome but not well built. Some are well built but not handsome. But Joseph was handsome and well built. So every morning my sanctified imagination tells me, thank you, that when he woke up and he began to exercise, she looked at his biceps and his triceps and she looked at his muscles and she began to admire him he knew that she was looking at him but praise God his eyes were fixed on Jesus for Proverbs 22 and verse 6 says train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he is old he will not depart from it I want to let my young people know this afternoon it doesn't matter what temptations come your way God can give you the victory. You don't have to bow. You don't have to fall. If you trust God, you can be like Joseph and say, I will not bow. I will not do it. If you trust God, he will give you the victory. We live in a world where sex is everything. If you're advertising a car, there's a naked woman. If you're advertising toothpaste, there's a naked woman. And sad to say, nakedness is entering into the Seventh-day Adventist church. There was a time when Seventh-day Adventist Christians were known based on how they dressed, based on how they deported themselves. But sad to say, nowadays you can't tell the difference between a Seventh-day Adventist person and a person who is out in the world. We dress like them. We look like them. We talk like them. Sad to say, some of us 
advertise for Kentucky Fried Chicken, leg, breast, and thigh. But praise God today, I want to let you know, keep yourselves covered under the blood of Jesus, for you have been washed in the blood. You have been covered in the blood of Jesus. As Seventh-day Adventist Christians, dress right, talk right, act right, we are a holy generation, a royal priesthood. We must dress like children of God. Lord of mercy, the preacher is in trouble. Let me put out a disclaimer. Let me tell you, Mandeville, one of the things that people hate about me is that I'm blunt and I speak the truth. But I've been called to be a watchman on the walls of Zion. If I see sin, I can't brush it under the carpet. I must call sin by his right name. So if you're offended, I'm sorry. But I've got to lift up Jesus. For Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He came to save people from their sins, not in their sins. So Seventh-day Adventists, let us live for Jesus. The Bible says that one day she couldn't take it anymore. She approached him and she began to make some serious advances. But Joseph had his eyes on Christ. I believe he was singing, All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? I believe he was singing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There, a precious fountain. And she came, and she came, Sister Dorothy. And when Joseph saw that she had come so close, he ran away and he left his coat in her hands. You know, one preacher said that Joseph had a problem with coats. Sister Thompson, I believe. Sister Wilkie, I believe. Sister Palmer, he had a problem with coats, you know. The brothers took the first coat, dipped it in the garden in the blood of an animal told their father that he was killed by an animal and now Mrs. Potiphar held on to his coat. Lord have mercy on the young man. Young men, be careful where you leave your coats. Be careful where you leave your coats because the devil is waiting to hold on to your coats. But bless my heart today, we have a coat of the righteousness of Jesus. If you're dipped in that fountain, if you're washed in that robe, when he covers you, you're well covered. And I can't imagine when Potiphar came home. She began to cry. And she said, this Hebrew that you have brought into our home, he tried to rape me. Joseph became the subject of embarrassment. Some of us who have been lied upon. People have told some vicious lies on us. Even in the church. And you don't want to come back. And when you see that brother or that sister up here, you're saying in your hearts, my God, how can these persons be so cold? But let me tell you something today, whether they told lies or not, this is the church of Almighty God. Don't stop coming to church. So if Big Mouth Pastor McLean offended you, come into the church. Look upon Jesus. Sinless is he. Father impute his life unto me. My life of scarlet. My sin and woe. Covered with his blood. Whiter than snow. When people hurt you. When people offend you. Don't say you're not coming back. If you go to another church. Hypocrites are going to be there. So stay in the ship of God. It might rock here and there. But it's the ship of Zion. I heard one preacher say last year. When the ship is rocking rock with it gossipers rock with it but biters rock with it evil workers rock with it rock with the ship of God it's 
Some people say they're not coming back. They transfer their membership. But when they run from Mandeville, they end up at other places that are hotter. You run out of the frying pan straight into the fire. Stay in Mandeville and lift up Jesus. You're not here to worship pastor. You're not here to worship elder. You're here to worship God. Stay in the ship of God. Joseph ended up in prison. I want you to follow carefully the but God phrase. He ended up in a pit. He moved from a pit to the palace. But no, he was in prison. But while he was in prison, God was still with him. God does not leave his people. God is not like man. Man makes and breaks promises. But God keeps his promises. It may not come through tomorrow morning. But God is going to come through right on time. And while he was in prison, he met two men. Both had dreams. But they did not remember or they could not interpret their dreams. Joseph interpreted their dreams. One was reinstated and the other was executed. But human nature is of such, my brothers and sisters. The one who was reinstated, he forgot about Joseph. Elder Henry, there are people who will forget about the good that you do. Sister Gail, there are people in God's church. For the hall, you will help them. And you will go out of your way. Nella Simpson, it was as if you did nothing. That's human nature. Ashley, you are young. There are people who are like that. Brother Thomas, you have been a deacon for years. But two could just the same. When they despise you, Sister Grant, when they pretend as if you did nothing, do good for the love of Christ constrains you. The love of Christ keeps you going. For you're not working to be seen. You're working for the honor and glory of God. But after a few years, Joseph was remembered. There was a famine. The Pharaoh sent for him. Pharaoh had a dream again. There were seven fat cows and seven lean cows to some match. The seven fat cows represented seven years of plenty. And the seven lean cows represented seven years of famine. Joseph instructed the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh built a number of barns and he stored grain. But there was a famine all over the world. And Joseph's brothers came to Egypt. Oh, praise the Lord. When you walk with God, those who cursed you will end up blessing you. They came to Egypt. They did not know it was Joseph. 21 years had passed. He was now 38 years old. He spoke the Egyptian language, Sister Carr, fluently. And after they were leaving, he placed a silver cup in the sack of the youngest brother, Benjamin. And as they left, the soldiers were in hot pursuit. They were pursued and they searched and found this silver cup in the sack of Benjamin. They were brought back before Joseph. And as they came before him, they went, they fell on their knees and they began to beg him for mercy. Joseph's dream was fulfilled. Their shears were bowing before his shear. I want to let you know it does not matter the length of time. In God's own time, the dream will come true. When Joseph saw that they were truly converted, he revealed himself. 
They hugged him. They wept. They asked for forgiveness. But I could hear Joseph say, what you meant as evil, God meant it for good. You thought you had destroyed my life, but God, when you sold me as a slave, but God, you thought you had seen the end of me, but God, people of man little church, you would have been sold as slaves. You have been told that you can't make it. People have told lies on you, but a day is going to come. You're going to look back at your enemies and you're going to say to them, you thought you had destroyed me, but God. He saw Mrs. Potty for my brothers and sisters. She was not so beautiful anymore. Her skin was wrinkled. She never had that class or sophistication anymore. But I could hear Joseph say to her, Mrs. Potiphar, I want to thank you very much. When you thought you had destroyed my life, you told a lie on me that I tried to rape you. But God had greater things in store for my life. I want to let you know, my brothers and sisters, that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. I want to let you know when circumstances come upon you and you feel like you want to give up, just remember but God, when all other things have come against you, remember that two-letter phrase. But God, remember when you're at the workplace and your co-workers conspire to destroy you. Remember, but God, remember when you're in the church and you feel like you don't want to come back. Remember that two-letter phrase, but God. The philosopher says, you need to reason your way out. The politician says, you need to vote your way out. The dance hall fan says, you need to party your way out. The alcoholic says, you need to drink and drink and drink your way out. The wicked people say, we need to kill our way out. The obia worker says, I need to obia your way out. The devil says, there is no way out. But bless my heart, Jesus says, I am the way out. For John 14 verse 6 declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I want to let you know today when circumstances assail you, when you feel like you can't make it, remember but God, remember my brother, remember my sister. We serve a powerful God. Remember but God. As I close, Joseph found himself in a, in a pit. Then he moved to a palace. Then he moved to a prison. But God promoted him to prime minister. Touch your neighbor and say, my blessings are around the corner. Touch your neighbors and tell them that your blessings are around the corner. Your blessings are around the corner. Tell your neighbors. Sister Alicia, look at Elder Gordon and tell him that his blessings are around the corner. Amidst all the rough times. Amidst all the challenges. Keep your faith in God. Brother Buchanan, it matters not what will come your way. Keep your focus on Jesus. Sister Simpson, hold on to the unchanging hand of Prince Emmanuel. When troubles come, as they must, when you feel like all hope is gone, when gossipers and backbiters get on top of your nerves, remember, but God, when fathers and mothers forsake their children, remember, 
but God. And as God's people today, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us. Let us run with patience. Put away the biting. One of the things that is affecting the Seventh-day Adventist church is backbiting. Persons are hurting because of what others have done to them. The story is told, as I close, Sister Anne-Marie, of a raster man who was on a train one day with a little boy. As they were on this train, a mosquito bit the little boy, Elder Simpson. The little boy was so upset, he gave the mosquito an almighty slap. The mosquito was crushed, Sister Billings. The raster man was upset, and he told the little boy, he said, you should not kill Jack Creature. Let Jack Creature live. Don't you ever do that again. Two hours later, the raster man felt something in his back. He turned around. The little boy was confused, Elishar, because you know children, they like when you're straight. If you say one thing, you must mean it. So the little boy said, but didn't you tell me earlier on that I should not kill Jack Creature? The raster looked at him and said, yes, I did, but this one was a backbiter. <laughs> Leave gossip. Leave backbiting out of God's church. For as God's people, we have been called out of sin into the marvelous light of Jesus. Brother James, remember, but God, amidst all the challenges, amidst all the problems, remember today, but God, when you're tempted to forget what God has done for you, remember where he has brought you from and where you could have been. Then you'll say like the songwriter, remember, Lord, I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord, but God, in the midst of your problems, but God in the midst of your challenges. But God. But God. But God. But God. But God. He alone can see us through. A fitting climax for this sermon. Thank you very much, Pastor McLean. Many of us have, well, all of us could have been blessed. And many of us have been there. We have been the subjects of all the attacks and all the assaults. But God, and we are still here. A fitting conclusion to our, sermon, our message today. Hymn number 462. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. 462. Blessed are you. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long. This is my story. Oh, praise the Lord. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. 
all the day long just before we sing the second stanza just before we sing the second stanza there might be someone here today who has not yet surrendered his or her life to Jesus you have not yet made your calling an election sure but today you recognize that God has a plan for your life you might wonder my brother my sister why is it every time we are concluding a service that we have an appeal or we make an appeal we need to do so because tomorrow might be too late the Bible tells us today if you hear his voice harden not your heart the devil wants you to believe that you have tomorrow and next week tomorrow is promised to no man today if you hear his voice harden not your heart is there one person here today who has not yet accepted Jesus as his or her personal Savior and you want us to pray for you you want to say Lord have mercy on my life despite the challenges despite the problems I want you Jesus to be Lord and master of my life is there one such person you're not yet a baptized member of God's church today if you hear his voice harden not your heart is there such a person you have not yet made your calling an election sure don't be afraid to accept Jesus don't be afraid to say Lord I want you the Bible declares that a day is coming when there will be famine not for bread or for water but for the Word of God a day is going to come when you will want to hear the word but it will be too late is there such a person God bless you young man shake my hand God bless you the devil is a liar today the devil has lost because the Bible says young man I call upon you because you're strong is there one more just before we sing the second stanza you have not yet accepted the Lord as your Savior but God has a plan for you today God wants to save you not in your sin but from your sin is there one other person today is there one other person who wants to say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way you recognize today it's all about Jesus it's not about pastor or elder or deacon it's about you and your Savior is there one more is there one more today is there one more let us sing the next stanza perfect submission perfect delight visions of rapture now burst on my side perfect delight visions of rapture now burst on my sight angels descending bring from above oh praise the Lord echoes of mercy whispers of love let's sing the chorus with meaning this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long this is my story is this your story is this your song don't you want to praise your Savior oh praise the Lord all the day long just before we sing the final stanza just before we sing the final stanza let me just labor for about 50 seconds there probably might still be somebody else you're struggling right now you want to raise your hand but the devil is saying don't do it tell the devil today that he's a liar tell him that he's a defeated foe tell him that on Christ the solid rock you stand all other ground is sinking sand let him know today that Jesus has a plan for your life let him know today it doesn't matter how many sins you have committed there is still a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains there is still one more person won't you just raise your hand wherever you are we want to pray for you today let the devil know let Satan know today that he's a loser because Jesus is the winner man the next appeal goes out to the members of God's church you are here today you have been bruised you have been battered perhaps lies have been told on you 
perhaps evil things have been done to you even by your own brothers and sisters perhaps you came here today and you said this would have been your final Sabbath <laughs>